it's Jazz and... Mm, don't fly away. Hey, it's Jazz and this is Wildlife Matters. If you ask someone to give you an example of an endangered species, I bet they're gonna answer something famous like pandas, tigers, whales, or rhinos. Rarely will you run into someone whose answer is gonna be cloud rats hellbenders, or Philippine eagle owls. And while there's nothing wrong with supporting those popular endangered animals, there is an issue that we need to talk about. Do you know the issue? you know the issue? Let me introduce you to the terms charismatic and non-charismatic species. These terms are both used in conservation, but let me break it down for you. Charismatic species are species that are in need of conservation, that are famous, in a sense that they are the ones that are most talked about, they're the poster child for every campaign, and you see them everywhere, like on notebooks, fundraisers, t-shirts, you name it. These animals are usually mammals or large birds, and they're usually large, dangerous, cute, or furry. On the other hand, non-charismatic species are the opposite. These species are usually small, slimy, spiny, and unattractive to most humans. And the general public knows little to nothing about them. They are the endangered animals that are not paid attention to. So charismatic animals are the ones that get most of the attention when it comes to conservation. In conservation programs, a lot of money is needed. And that's why many orgs are raising funds to set up campaigns for animals. But not all species are as bankable as others. The unattractive, non-charismatic ones usually end up getting overlooked. But don't get me wrong, conserving popular endangered species isn't a bad thing. And in fact, that's the reason why they're able to stand a chance against extinction in the first place. But on the other hand, there is another side of the spectrum that also needs protecting. Because while we are busying ourselves conserving only the charismatic animals, we are slowly and unknowingly allowing the non-charismatic animals to disappear. To make it simpler, let me give you a real-life example. Let's look at Instagram. Now you can earn money on Instagram, but first you'd have to be famous. You'd have to be an influencer. And you can have the best personality in the world, be the most interesting person, and still not make it as an influencer if you don't have the specific standard of looks or appearances that Instagram users are looking for. And so in the same way, animals that don't look as cute or as eye-catching as others don't receive the attention and the funding that they need and, and barely even get a campaign to start. And as a result, will go extinct faster than popular species. The cloud rat, for example, is an animal that's close to me and the Wildlife Matters team because it's a local species that not a lot of people know about. It's a rat the size of a rabbit and has a big bushy tail. And there are many species of cloud rats and all of them are declining in numbers. There's not much research or conservation initiatives to support them because very few are paying attention. So many species are facing decline and we don't even know about it. The Bramble K. Melamies, for example, is a small rodent that very few people knew about until it made headlines in 2016. Why? Because it went extinct. What about Chinese crocodile lizards, Chinese pangolins, toad-skinned frogs, Hispaniolian solenodons, pelagic thresher sharks, or, or the sadly named hellbenders? Ever heard of them? Probably not. Do we have to wait for species to go extinct before we start paying attention? No, we shouldn't. So what should we do? Number one, pay attention to even the least appealing species. Animals like mammals are the easiest to get people to pay attention to, but animals like fish, amphibians, reptiles, and even insects, all of them end up getting overlooked and are facing terrible declines. Number two, don't leave the conservation to charity alone. With threats like the illegal wildlife trade and deforestation, more and more animals are being added to the list of endangered species. The problem is that we tend to have this thinking that conserving animals is the job of charities or NGOs, but this is something that all of us, all of us, including the government, should be paying attention to as well. In fact, there should be national budgets allocated to preserving our wildlife and nature because this is essential. Especially when you have an economy that's based on tourism. Number three, turn the non-charismatic into charismatic species. Media, word of mouth, and visuals all have the power to instill animals in people's minds. If we can talk about non-charismatic animals more, if we can include them in the conversation, then we actually have the power to instill them in people's minds. To both the young and the old. Start them young. Teach them about these animals as early as you can. Because when people pay attention, conservation begins there. Number four, research. Keep on learning about animals. The internet is your friend. Do your research and stick to credible sources. 
You can also check out EDGE, which is an org that focuses on protecting non-charismatic species. Check them out at edgeofexistence.org. Let's grow in... What's going Let's grow in knowledge together and make sure that no animal gets overlooked. We are now transitioning into a world where inclusivity is so important. But let's not forget that when it comes to animals who can't speak for themselves, we become their voice. And we have to make sure that the inclusivity applies to them as well. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and make sure to share this video with your friends. Because remember that every piece of wildlife matters.